we don't start right here <laughs> we're going to start at Buttermere however the reason that I've started this before to put it at the beginning basically is the view up Newlands Valley on a splendid day like today it would be a travesty not to include this at the beginning this is the road that you're going to take to get to Buttermere or one of them the other one is you can go down by the side of Keswick and go down Borrowdale up over Honister Pass and back down again but Newlands Valley for my choice is the way to get to Buttermere Borrowdale has its own appeal for sure but Newlands Valley you just wait until you see one of the views that we're going to see on the way and there's more than one and this is where it starts to get spectacular it's the only word to describe what you're going to see as we ride up Newlands Valley it starts to get spectacular just in the in the dip there you've got the lesser spotted GSCB one of the very rare animals in this region But come on, come on! God, it's fantastic! If you ever thought of living in a farmhouse, that has to be it, doesn't it? Look at that white dot in amongst this stunning countryside. Where else would you want to live than that? Where? That has got to be the location for a place to live anywhere in the world. When it doesn't stop there either, boys and girls. Are you ready? I mean, are you sitting down? Because just look at that. Will you just look at that? Simply breathtaking. In fact, breathtaking doesn't cover it. The mountains in the distance, right at the far end, that's where we're heading. Oh, and if that there is an old volcano, look at the steep sides in the concave side of it. I wonder if that was an old, or is an old volcano. Directly in front there is a waterfall and I haven't got a clue where the water's coming from on top of there but there's a waterfall. And should you be here after the rains or even during the rains it is spectacular. But it gets even better. It gets even better. Look 
at that. Come on, get out the way. Mint sauce. <laughs> it's not very often I come here and see it in such splendour. But today we have been blessed by the gods. But over there is Crumock water and over that way is Buttermere. And this is where the adventure really starts because we start at Syke Farm campsite and tea room. Surrounded by this countryside and these views, the site itself it's wild camping with facilities. Get across to this side as we've come past Lowe's Water. You can now see the coastline over there. The windmills, that's the Workington area. So that's how far across we are. As we drop down, heading towards an area called Egremont. Now we have navigated around more or less the edge, the western edge of Cumbria, having left Lowe's Water and come onto the major road and going through Frizzington. And bypassing Whitehaven, we've come off at Gosforth. Because now we're heading into Eskdale. And it is this white pub here that you turn left and you'll see the signs for Boots, Boot and Langdale via a 30% incline. <laughs> We're heading over that. Now this is where you start to take your time. You soak it all in. You absorb this beautiful countryside. You become horizontal. The stress leaves your body. Now we've got here on the left, Ravenglass and Eskdale Railway where you can take a little scale down steam train all the way down to the beautiful area of Ravenglass and back again. And it's an experience, let me tell you. But up there, you've got Scarfell Pike, the highest mountain in England. And the road we're taking doesn't quite go that high. A little known fact is the road that we're riding over now is also following a similar path to the Roman road. Ravenglass was a port for the Roman ships to come in and there's Roman baths and remains down there. But this was the road that they, or at least the route that they used to follow from Ravenglass, they'd come here. You've got Hard Knock Fort which we've spoken about before, but we'll speak about again. And that road, on one of the other adventures, we spoke about Broom Castle. The road went from Ravenglass, Hard Knock Fort, and actually went to Broom, because there are Roman remains at Broom as well. So you were following a route which is a couple of thousand years of history. If you're not that confident on your bike, it may be a good idea to think twice. There have been a couple of bikes in the last year that have come off going up this hill because it's challenging. If you're not confident on feathering your brake,
don't do it. If you're relatively new to riding, don't do it. I'd rather you didn't do it than attempt it and come off. But then again, shy boys, get out. I'll leave the decision to you. I'm just putting that warning there because coming this way towards Langdale and Ambleside is harder than coming the other way. And this is the first time, <laughs> this is the first time that I've done it on the Tiger. If you want my advice, you select first gear. And enjoy the ride. Look at that for a view, man. Come on! <laughs> Don't even consider changing gear, just take your time. A cyclist that comes up here, they're my new heroes. Look at that for the view. Just enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy the challenge. Now believe it or not, just over there is hard not fought. And here's a little bit about the fort. Now bathhouses, of which we're looking at here, at the end there you've got the cold room, and at the end there you've got the warm room. And they were normally located outside the fort. <laughs> I think the smell would probably make up the reasons why. But the bathhouse or the warm room allowed the body to sweat to get the dirt out of the pores and then the dirt was scraped off and then the cold room to close your pores back up again heat was provided by two furnaces located to the southwest which is over there so the heat came into there and they stood or sat and enjoyed themselves outside of the Roman fort itself. So what we're going to now do is go inside the fort. So you've been in the fort getting yourself all sweaty and you go and have a bath. But the baths that they had we now know as saunas. How cool is that? And what we're just about to go into is the entrance. And that entrance is called Porta Pretoria. And it's the southeastern gateway is the main entrance into the fort. And the road running through it led to the headquarters within the building. And it was built by Emperor Hadrian in his reign from 117 to 138 AD. That was a while ago, wasn't it? One one seven to one three eight AD. I guess also 
part of the problem would be getting the stone up here to build it on the top of a whacking great hill. I think Emperor Hadrian was a bit of a, a tyrant. Let's give the troops some work to do. I don't know what. Let's build a wall. In fact, let's build a fort halfway up a mountain. So what we're now going to go and have a look at is the view that some of the soldiers would have had. In fact, all of the soldiers here would have had. And that view is all the way down Eskdale. Now you've seen some of the view already from the top of Hardnut, but this is the view that you would have got from the fort. Are you ready? Are you really ready? All right, have a look. Look at that view behind me there. All the way down into Westdale. Over that way, in front of me, you've got Hard Knot Pass, where the road continued for the Romans across to Ambleside. But that's where they came from. I'm sure the Romans could have thought of a better route, you know. You can see where the road in front of us winds and twists to help us get to the top. Just take your time. This is the bit you've got to be careful on. This is the bit that's got adverse cambers. And it's this bugger here. There we go. Stunning today, isn't she? Hard not pass. Absolutely breathtaking. The view that we're about to see is worth it. Just look at that. This gives a totally different perspective coming this way from the Ravenglass end, Eskdale end, than it does from the Ambleside end. And this is the road that the Romans followed. Happy days. Breathtaking, isn't it? And there we are, over and down, hard not pass. I haven't got a sweat on at all. <laughs> Bloody mint, absolutely mint. 
slick first gear again and just take your time there's no rush don't get caught out by having to change gear and getting a false neutral and all of that rubbish you ready? that's the start of it that is the start of it I mean don't get me wrong coming the opposite way to the way we're going now offers views that are absolutely off the scale but you get a different view both ways each equally as stunning Just look, look at the view, right the way across to Ambleside. And offering you views like that. Go on! Ho 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 ho! Some days it's just great to be me. Now that's where we're going to be going through as well. We get down to the bottom, we hang a left, the little road goes, I can see it, the little road goes along there. And that's where we're heading, to that far mountain over there, that's Langdale. You can go straight on when I turn left, you can, and go to Ambleside. But you're going to miss out on splendiferous experience. And that is where we've just come over, but the views just don't stop. This is why you have to take your time, because you've got to soak these views in. If you go too fast, you've got to keep watching the road, you're going to miss it all. I mean, come on, eh? Come on. Beat me, bite me and tickle me till I cry. How about that? How about that Scarfell Pike the highest point you can see Does it get any better than that? And you see, if you come up Langdale the other way, you don't get this. Now, straight in front there, that's the old Dungeon Gill. Find out more about them in the book. You can stay there most certainly stop on your route to have something to eat and drink because not only is it a hotel there's also a bar to the side so you don't have to be a resident 
There's the entrance to the old dungeon gill. Find out more about them in the book and watch a film of them. Woohoo! So we get to Ambleside now. Ambleside's actually quite nice. It's lovely just to walk around. The part of the road that we're on now is classed as one of Britain's most beautiful drives or beautiful routes from Grasmere to Keswick. You're flanked either side by mountain ranges. But also as we get to the top, you've got one of the most famous mountains probably in the world. Part of its name meaning volcano. So where we started this this morning, and we went up Newlands Valley and I said, I wonder if that one there happens to be an extinct volcano. That one is definitely an extinct volcano. Hell villain in the distance. And it was here in the storms of December 2015 that the water cascaded down the side of the mountains on the right so viciously. It washed away part of the road. And that part of the road was just here where the stream comes down. It was so violent, it washed away the road. So it's been rebuilt as you can see. But also they took time to re-tarmac it. So a lot of the stretch of the road here, which was, should we say, slightly worn out, is now a beautiful smooth road. Felmia was created to send a lot of the water from here again down to the northwest because of the development of the northwest Manchester and Preston and Liverpool. But this was dammed at the far end. And unfortunately you can't get round. There's a road that goes round the back side of this. At the moment, unfortunately, you can't get round. Because from that side you can get a fabulous view of Helvellyn. But it's blocked off for roadworks repairs. And we're now dropping down into St John in the Vale. Another canvas upon which beauty has been painted. 